welcome to our series on the ideal Christian family or home. Throughout this series, we'll explore the foundational principles and practices that shape a Christian household according to biblical teachings. Join us as we delve into God's definition of family and what it means to embody a truly Christian household. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! We are welcome to the presence of the Lord once again. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. And I look at faith, you bless your name. For the grace you are giving unto us again to meet at your present Father, I set our praise in Jesus' mighty name. Even for the concluding part of our ID Christian home today, blessed be your name in Jesus' mighty name. The grace for us to be able to possibly use all those things that we had learned in the series of our dear Christian home, release abundantly on us in Jesus' mighty name. Even as you go into this last episode, Father, feed up with your wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. King of glory, worship your majesty. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I believe you must have heard from the word of that prayer, this is the last episode, and that is the episode 18 of uh, our dear Christian home. We are not saying that we will not touch anything that affects husband or wife or children again in future. But in the teaching series, for, for, for now, we want to lay it to rest. In future, we may still come back to it or come back to something that has to do with uh, the ideal Christian home. And this uh, part, like I said, is the last part and it's part 18 of the series if you means any of this uh, part, you may just uh, get to your YouTube and search for the part. You may not know the particular part, but if you are looking at part one, part two, you see the exact one. But I recommend that all the parts, you must, you, must, uh, you must contact them, you must read them, you must digest them, because there is purpose for God saying that we should eat that thing the time uh, we are eating it. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' mighty name. So, the idea Christian home, part 18, closing the door to infidelity in marriage. That's the title of today's uh, teaching. Closing the door to infidelity in marriage. Our anchor scripture is uh, 4 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Verse 19 to 20. Well, maybe we can, I don't know, maybe we can borrow chapter 18. Let, let's borrow chapter 18 and join to it. Flee fornication. Everything that a man doeth is without, is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinned against his own body. I was discussing with somebody sometimes ago that why is it. Uh, why is it a sin that one is committing, uh, uh, that, that anybody that commits it, they say is committing sin, is in, is in, is in God. You know what? God has said that ye are the temple of himself, that is, you are the temple of God. So if you are not committing uh, sin or committing fornication or even adultery, although you can say that you are doing it to yourself, but you are the temple of God. So which means by the time you do that work, you are doing it against the temple of God. I read verse 19 now. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? That verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. That is, in your body and spirit, which belong unto God. The Lord will give us even the understanding to know all we have in that uh, small uh, anchor scripture in Jesus' mighty name. Closing the door to infidelity in marriage. Let us remember that one of the purpose of marriage is to avoid fornication. We have treated that one about three parts uh, ago. There are three, three main purposes. But one of the purposes of, the, uh, of marriage is to avoid fornication. We have that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I think we can, we can read some of this. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 7, let's look at uh, 
uh, verse 2 to 5. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Verse 3, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Verse 4, the wife hath no power of her own, of, of, of her own body, but the husband's. And likewise also the husband had not power of his own body, but the wife. I think we can join chapter uh, 5 to it. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourself to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. We mentioned something like this, and we, we, we make reference to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that's what I have by that there. That except when you are fasting, then you must not deny yourself of conjugal uh, relationship. We said that, and that's what we have had now. Now, let's look at uh, Hebrew 2, so that I can, I can just uh, start moving uh, fast. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefied. But one among us and adulterers, God will judge. May God not judge us in Jesus' mighty name. So with this, we are uh, aware that uh, we should close the door uh, to infidelity in a home very short. You are very short. You close it very short. Put uh, put uh, the key that cannot be counterfeited onto it, and the Lord will give us uh, the grace even to, to to be in line with God and His injunction in Jesus' mighty name. So I want to advise us to read uh, four Corinthians chapter the whole of that. That chapter, First Corinthians chapter seven, that is verses one to forty. At at, at a spare time, we must read that one. I continue. Infidelity in marriage is a pandemic. When I say pandemic, I'm not talking of endemic now. When you say it's endemic, well, maybe you are saying uh, just uh, coming. But now it's not. It's like uh, everybody is involved. That everybody in quotes. It is pandemic. That's, uh, that's the word that God, I was just looking at the word to use. God just dropped my, that word into me. That it is pandemic. It, to the extent that it not appears as if it is not legalized. It appears as if it is not legalized. It appears as if, if you don't even engage in it, you, are not, you, are, you, you don't feel a month. So we should be very, very careful. Infidelity in marriage is a pandemic. It is a pandemic. And uh, we must watch out. And when we deal with pandemic, the pandemic is, is stronger than something that is endemic. You need, you need, you need series of, even the, word, the, the contemporary word pandemic, you need powerful vaccine to be able to get out of that uh, pandemic. Now, when we are talking of uh, a spiritual uh, pandemic, what we are saying is that uh, you need to get back to the root, I mean to the Bible, get back to God, you know, for us to know how to get outside that entanglement, at least for those people that are already entangled before. Who are not the steps involved in closing the door of in, in infidelity in marriage? What are the what are the steps involved? What are those things that we 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 may it's not necessarily Point one follow point, uh, point two follow point one point three follow point two one uh, point four. Point, no, it is not arranged in a particular. It's not arranged in a particular order. And I want to tell you that uh, all the points we are mentioning here, they are inexhaustive. They are they are inexhaustive. You can say yes, uh, Pastor said uh, only ten point. No, in as much as you know that what you are doing or what that person is doing is not biblical, then it's part of. Uh, what we must do to close the door uh, uh, against infidelity in marriages. Avoid extramarital relationship that is cheating. 
However cheap the opportunity may present itself to you. Yes. God reminded me to put that one when I was preparing that thing. And now the, the, the fact me to uh, the case of Joseph in Genesis. Joseph in Genesis chapter, I think that's uh, Genesis chapter 39. That would be 39. Genesis chapter 39. Uh, let's look at verse 7 to confirm that. Verse 7. And it came to pass, after this thing, that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. Verse 8. But he refused and said unto his mistress' wife, Behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house, and he had committed all that he had to my hand. Verse 9. There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me, but thee, but thee that he has not kept anything uh, back from, from, uh, from Joseph, Except, uh, except the woman, because thou art his wife. How then can I do uh, can, can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You and I will know that uh, it's a free opportunity that knocked on the door of Joseph. And that is what God said we should tell you. By saying that I have achieved the opportunity may present itself to you. However cheap the opportunity may present itself unto you. I have said sometimes ago that um, the death, when, when you cut people doing such a thing, another related uh, uh, other crime or whatever or uh, offense, they will say it's the work of the devil. That's what they will that's what they will tell you. Oh, it's not me. It's the work of the is the work of the devil. Uh -huh. And Baba has said, let's he take an advantage of you, then we must, we must always realize the devices of the devil. Anything that looks at the appearance of that evil. The Bible did not say we, we, we should walk away. We say flee for all the appearance of the evil. Anything. You see, when you, when you, at, at, at the end of the day, by the time you do it, you will have succeeded in doing it. You will have, maybe you will have, uh, you will have, uh, well, enjoy this if that is the case. The devil that has you to go and do it is the first one that will make guests of you. In fact, it's the one that will report you to your pastor. He will be the one that will report you to your spouse. I want us to be to be to, to be careful of that one. So that is extra marital fear. You must want Joseph had a, a, a free a free opportunity. Because the, the opportunity presented itself cheap unto him. Yet, he didn't spoil the temple of God in himself. There should be sexual purity. Hebrew chapter 13, that we saw the other time, we're talking about uh, sex, sexual purity. I think we can quickly, uh, Hebrews chapter, maybe I look at uh, chapter, yes, active, and verse 4. In verse 4, that is true. Marriage is, uh, is honorable in all and better on the fire. But what bongers and adulterers go with joy? So please let be conscious of that. Another point that I made, made here is that who knows you are, uh, uh, who knows you? That is, the, uh, that thing that you must know. No, you know yourself. People may not know you, but you know the extent that you can handle issue. You know the extent you can handle issue. People may people will be looking at you. Oh, it's our pastor. Oh, it's our deacon. They they will people people will think that you know how to handle that. But it is you that knows best how to handle a particular situation. So people, when they see the 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 uh, the, the, the person of opposite sex. Then they, 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 they lost control. Whereas the other people, your church members, your congregants, oh, our pastor is, uh, I know, I lay anointed of God. But the man must know that, uh, the man that knows that uh, he's always, he's always uh, another thing. When he see, it may be a man or woman now, when he see a person on opposite side, then he must run away, he must keep it, he must know how he, he, how he, uh, 
he takes care of, of, of himself. That's why when we are in the school of disciples, those years, we were told that even when we are doing counseling, especially when we are counseling the person of opposite sex, let your spouse, the, of course, the opposite spouse, let it be around. Or if, if that one cannot be done, let the opposite sex go and give the counsel there. Because we have seen the situation in this contemporarily corrupt world that somebody went to, uh, to the pastor to take, uh, to take advice or certain things. And as he entered, he locked the door. He locked, he locked the door. He locked, not the door of his own, of our own. He locked the door of the pastor's office. He knows how the pastor, you know, you know, he's not a new member. If a new member, he wouldn't be allowed free access to the pastor. Now go to the pastor. Lock the door, put the put the key in, in our bag, and naked up. Uh, as, what can we do about that one? The Lord will help us. The Lord will give us even the grace to resist the devil. Then the next thing is how will the pastor handle that uh, issue? If he didn't handle, if he didn't handle it properly, of course people who want to come in, they will see that the lock, the door has been locked. Of course, the person that will be would be, would be People would think that he has Lord the is the pastor. No one would know it is the woman that Lord because hey, God would give us wisdom. We don't have the luxury of that to discuss all this. Please, when you know that, uh, even at that, when you are looking at somebody afar off, the spirit of God in you must be telling you certain things about that person. Do not now say because uh, well, yeah, let, let me just let me just manage that. No, you may not be able to manage that situation. And that is why we, we, we are saying that we should be praying against every form of a temptation. And while we are praying against any, for any form of temptation, we, will not, we must not romance a temptation ourselves. Although the pastor cannot be said to romance in, uh, temptation, uh, I, I think that when you, when, you, when you want to do cancer, open the door of your office wide. But make sure you talk in such a way that a natural person will not, if you drop, on what you are saying, you know, open the door of your office, you know, so that anybody that wants to come in, by the time he's, uh, if somebody is not coming and he's locking the door, you must, you must raise an alarm at that level. But if you lock the door against yourself, the, the, the person coming in must, must, we lock the door against, God will give us wisdom in that area. But let me, uh, let me tell you, temptation does not come in a particularly regimented way. The way temptation is presented to one may be different from the way the pre the, uh, temptation is presented to another one. So let us continue to have some wisdom for us to, to get out of, uh, uh, to, not even to get into temptation in the forest. Uh, no, uh, what I've mentioned about uh, how to handle, how to, then when you now come to the issue of uh, husband and wife again, you must determine the e extent, you must determine you must define your relationship. You must define the areas you can go. You must define the, the, the thing you can take and the thing you cannot take in marriages. I mean, just like I said in the last episode, you have to you have to communicate with your uh, your spouse. These are the things I want. These are the things I will expect. These, these are the things. These are the ways I want to be treated. Like, uh, for example, abuses. You know, there's no one that loves abuse. But by the time you lay it down, there it will be a, a guiding uh, principle. Disrespect is another one. No one, no one likes to be disrespected. Unpredictable behavior is another one. I say, especially when there is no just, justifiable reason for it. Somebody just came from work and now behaving strange. If care is not taken, if that person is not that careless, he must know that. The spouse will know that is a carrying over effect of what has happened to him or her outside. So you just discover that you, you just change your mood suddenly without communicating anything. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. Abandonment is, is another one. Abdication is another one. Abdication is uh, neglecting your normal duty. Neglecting what is uh, normal. It is that is normal uh, for you. Then I've mentioned abandonment. God will give us even the grace and understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Satisfy 
each other's uh, emotional needs. That is companionship. Not that uh, anytime you are home, the wife will be in the Angu A and the, the husband will be at Angu Z. No, it's not, it's not right. You know, companionship must be displayed at all times. You must maintain no secrecy. No secrecy at all. The Lord will give us the grace to be open to ourselves in Jesus' mighty name. Let everything be open to both of you. Don't just cohabit. There's a difference between marriage and cohabiting. When cohabiting, you just pick that uh, trump from the gutter. I will take, take him or her uh, home. I will start living together. That's not, that's not marriage. Of course, that's not ideal Christian and marriage. If, if there's anyone hearing my voice or anyone that calls himself a Christian, or even a, 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 I don't believe a believer would do that. Or even a believer that does that one, you must uh, don't, you must go through what we call restitution. You must go what, what we call restitution. Go and go and go and perfect your, your marriage and it will be well with you. They are just co cohabiting with him. It means uh, anything, any any slightest thing, the two of you will pass away. That's not the arrangement of God for marriages. Let your relation be that of uh, an ideal Christian home as called for by God. Then, don't live apart for a long period. Don't live apart for a long period. I said it in one of our previous episodes, except for the reason of uh, employment. The two of you must be li living continuously together. But for employment purpose, well, that does not mean that... Uh, you now take that one as an opportunity to now say bye-bye to your spouse. No. So don't live apart for a long period. Because when you live apart for a long period, the devil may find his way to cleverly come in, as he did in Genesis chapter 3, in the life of uh, Adam and Eve. The Lord will deliver us in Jesus' mighty name. So what? There are so many things that uh, we can see, but because of my, because of our time, let see. Let me say I can just uh, round up the series that is the ideal uh, Christian uh, home. Then learn contentment. Remember, godliness with contentment is great gain, especially the women. Learn con contentment. First Timothy chapter six, verses six to ten. First Timothy chapter six. Uh, verses uh, 6 to 10. Verse 6. <clears throat> but godliness with contentment is great gain. Verse 7 now. For we brought nothing into this world, and in sudden we can carry nothing out. Uh, verse, uh, I think we can, we can read, we can read the, other, the other two verses there. So do everything for the sake of God. Even if you offend you, even she offends you, then do everything. You know, everything. Let, let, leave, leave the thing to God. You know, I know God cannot, cannot offend you. But at least, just offend that person and forget about the whole thing. Cut off whatever or whosoever attempt to tempt you. Anything, anything that wants to tempt you, cut off with it. Anybody that wants to tempt you, cut off from him. Any situation that we want to tempt you, vacate that situation. And the Lord will give you even the grace to do that. Let there be effective communication. We have been talking of that one. You have been talking of whatever is your, in your mind. Communicate it to your partner. He may not know. He may not know. Especially if, if it's not a wish. He will not know. So tell him exactly how you feel. Communication is the key. I said in our earlier uh, parts that uh, the first thing that the devil will use to attack the union in the home is lack of communication. That's the first thing that we use. That you won't be able to understand one another. And when you look at uh, Genesis chapter 11 again, the Tower of Babel, when, <laughs> when people that will come together, they are power in agreement, they are power in agreement. And you now refuse to, to agree with yourself then. It means the prayer of that person may not be answered. That the Lord will give us grace 
to have effective communication so that our prayer to God all the time will be answered in Jesus' mighty name. Another thing you can do to avoid uh, infidelity is avoid being in an obscure place with somebody of opposite sex, of opposite gender, the way you want it. Avoid being in an obscure place with somebody of opposite gender. I think that one explains itself. Even if you have not done anything horrible, people see you together. The first thing that will be transmitted to their brain is that they are doing it together. And that's why some of us that, that travel, you know, for official purpose, for whatever reason, and we lay, we, we book room in the hotel, we must be very, very careful that it is what you go there for that you do. Because when, when, so, oh, I saw, I saw, I saw, so, so, I saw, so, hotel. Eh? What did you, you what did you go there to do? That's the, that's the pleasure. You know how to play your game very, 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 very neat. It is that assignment you went for in that place. You know, it's not the hotel that you go to. You go for an of your assignment. And after you finish that reassignment, you have to rest somewhere before the time will come for you to return back home. So when you are now returning back home, uh, then you now, of course, you leave that uh, you leave that place. It is only you that know why you go there. I remember of uh, a pastor that said he is anointed. He said, we want to go to a brother. I think I mentioned it before. We want to go to a, to a brother. You know you don't have the capacity. Maybe the person does not know that he doesn't have the capacity as at that time. I mean, I wouldn't know. He went to the brother to go and preach with uh, the allies there. And uh, he, did not, he did not leave that place on earth. They, they, they make the the they are not make sure that uh, they have affairs with him, with him before you go. What are we talking about? You know you cannot handle you, you cannot handle it. You cannot handle it. Why did you go there? It's an obscure place. You know it's an obscure place as far as I'm concerned. That area. You know you cannot handle that situation. The Lord will give all the grace, even over temptation in Jesus' mighty name. Once he or she is not your wife or husband. Uh, let, let me repeat that one. Once he or she is not your wife or husband, form no unholy alliance with him or her. Once he or she is not your wife or husband, form no unholy alliance with him or her. Please understand the word unholy. I'm not saying that it is uh, against the scripture to have a business, a relationship with a person of the opposite sex. But it must not be on holy alliance. The Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' mighty. And finally, remember it is a trained child or children that can fulfill the glorious destiny. When we started this series, we look at uh, Psalm, I think Psalm 127. Psalm 127, we look at uh, verse 3 to 5. Verse 3. I tell us that, no, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of the mighty, the mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that the heart is quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. As I summarize the whole thing that we have been taking for the past 18 episodes, it is a disciplined child that can uh, fulfill all the tenets. The Bible has spelled out in Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5. That is, as arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, if, if you don't train your child, where will he become an arrow? You know, where will he even become a mighty and become mighty? The Lord will give us understanding. And lastly, that, that was there. Happy, happy is the man that is quiver is full with them. That God has given you his heritage. Keep the heritage as a man, as a woman. Do what you are supposed to do as, as, as a woman and as a wife and as a mother. The same thing with the father. As a man, as a father and as a husband. Even the children, they must do everything responsibly 
you know, to, to, to make them fulfill glorious destiny that the Lord has given unto them, even from uh, heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you all praise for the grace you have given unto us to come to the end uh, of a series of the Adi Christian home. Accept our praise in Jesus' mighty name. I commit these people unto you, O Lord. Everywhere they have missed this somewhere, that the reason of this message is, Father, the grace for them to make men believe upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Give them the grace to see them themselves as they are, and men and they are men, so that it will be well with them in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless your name, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If anybody has a word to make it right with God, you have heard from, from, from part 1 to part 18, we have been talking on, on what an ideal Christian home is, and what the responsibility of the man is, the responsibility of the woman, the responsibility of the children. And if, if you know that you are falling short of this, please put your right hand on your chest while we pray together to God under the confession of our faith. Father Lord, I come to you today. I have heard your word, and I know that with everything that I've heard today, I have, I have been committing sin. My God and my Father, you are the one that has power to forgive sin. And I've come to you today, forgive me, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Where, whether as a father or as a mother or as a child, anywhere that we have offended you, Lord, Father, forgive us in Jesus' mighty name. And it's great for us not to go back to our vomit released upon us in Jesus' mighty name. Make me to be truly yours from today and forevermore in the name of Jesus. Father, I bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. For God and our Father, your people have come to you and uh, they have promised not to go back to their vomit. Father, aching to their wealth in Jesus' mighty name. The grace for them to remain steadfast. Now that they have listened to all these teachings on their deep Christian hope, release upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.